appreciates the wonderful qualities of the beloved and spontaneously out of affection offers some service or some veneration see that's worship that's love uh, that's devotion and that's what we're talking about here we're talking about this wonderful aesthetic state of being in love and this is what we're trying to attain by cultivating the nectar of devotion and if one is in a, a pure state of mind in the mode of goodness and then chants the holy name of the Lord the Lord will reveal his glories from within huh? it's nice if you have a temple uh, if nice if you have association of devotees it's nice if you have Vedic scriptural knowledge and all that but you don't need any of that if you simply chant the holy name with love the love is the key ingredient here and love is not a business deal huh? I know in the Western society it, it, it has become degraded especially uh, in marriage or relationships between men and women where it's like okay I'll give you a place to live and you give me sex uh, it's, it's very degraded very low aesthetic um, the actual romantic ideal is Krishna because only Krishna can be perfect unlimitedly perfect and perfect in every way and as we soon discover when we chant the holy name uh, Krishna has no hesitation of revealing his wonderful qualities to us and attracting us to love him in this way so this should be our orientation in chanting uh, not to make a deal with Krishna not to try to get material advancement from Krishna but simply to love Krishna and in that way appreciate his wonderful qualities and everything that he does for us and um, that will lead to very fast advancement in chanting the ninth offense is to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name anyone can take part in chanting the holy name of the Lord but in the beginning one should not be instructed about the transcendental potency of the Lord those who are too sinful cannot appreciate the transcendental glories of the Lord and therefore it is better not to instruct them in this matter uh, this science of devotional service is very esoteric uh, esoteric means that it's beyond the understanding of ordinary people and it's available only to initiates or to specialized people with specialized knowledge uh -huh. and certainly this is the case in the uh, the glories of the holy name the glories of the holy name are not for everybody to understand uh, you need the proper background the proper ontology as we have discussed so many times uh, meaning is composed of the foreground and the background so the same foreground the same content can have a completely different meaning in a different context depending on the person's background knowledge depending on their level of education in spiritual life the meaning of the holy name will be completely different for them so we have to take that into account another point is we especially should not preach to people who don't want to hear we are very careful uh, not to preach to people who aren't listening because they will simply make some offense if they don't want to hear you're imposing on them and I don't know anything more annoying than somebody uh, trying to tell me something that I don't want to hear uh, have no desire to hear don't have time to hear <laughs> or whatever whatever the reason the, the reason doesn't matter what matters is whether the person's giving you permission to instruct them or not see I make very sure before I instruct someone that I have their permission that way um, I'm not throwing my pearls before swine as the saying goes I'm giving these I'm reserving the esoteric wisdom of the Vedas for those who are willing to hear and this policy has had very good results so we should also be the same way oftentimes when we first become a devotee especially we want to share our good fortune with everyone and anyone who will listen uh, and, and that 
in that enthusiasm, we make the mistake of preaching to people who really don't want to hear it, who have no thirst for this knowledge, no taste for it, and who will simply begin to criticize and argue and make so many offenses. And when we hear those offenses, that itself becomes an offense. To hear blasphemy and not be able to counteract it is an offense. We'll talk about that offense later on. But um, we don't want to hear blasphemy, especially if we don't have enough knowledge to counteract it uh, with good arguments and at least uh, defeat the arguments of the other person. Even if they're not convinced, at least, you know, get them to shut up. <laughs> so uh, we should avoid these contentious situations by being more careful about who we present this knowledge to. And in our case, our, our website especially is very carefully constructed so that when people first come, they are given a comparatively lower level of knowledge. And then as they dig deeper into the site, they get higher and higher uh, viewpoints on transcendental knowledge until they can actually uh, join the university and take courses directly um, under the supervision of advanced devotees and like that. So uh, we only only expose the glories of the holy name and of Krishna gradually. So as they develop a taste for hearing, they can go deeper and deeper into the subject matter. Uh, this, this science of preaching is very um, deep and, and it's tricky. But the fundamental is very easy to understand. Do they want to hear? Oh, yes? Okay, preach to them. If they don't want to hear, just drop it. You know, um, A little discretion in this way will go a long ways toward making your life easier. <laughs> and because you avoid this offense. And finally, the tenth offense is to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy names and to maintain material attachments even understanding even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. Every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must guard against these offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success. So what does it mean to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy names? Well, if we had complete faith in the chanting of the holy name, then that would be the only religious or spiritual method that we need to attain complete spiritual success. For example, Haridas Thakur. Haridas was born in a Muslim family. Uh, in the beginning, he had no association of devotees. He simply had an attraction for the holy name. And he developed that attraction into constant chanting. So Haridas was constantly chanting the holy name without offenses. In fact, this is what it takes to actually reach the stage of no offenses, because the next topic, of course, is how do I get rid of these offenses <laughs> if I have them? Uh, and, of course, uh, studying the scriptures helps when we understand how wonderful the Vedic knowledge is, when we understand how wonderful Krishna is, uh, when we understand how wonderful the results of the Holy Name are. If you want to know more about the results of the Holy Name, then Read the Phala Shruti, the uh, closing section of Sri Vishnu Sahasranam. Uh, that gives you a good idea of the actual results of chanting the holy name as far as their material, the material potency. But in the spiritual potency, the results are even more amazing. And simply by chanting the holy name, we can develop all the spiritual qualities of the greatest devotees and saints. So this is the one method that actually underlies and empowers all the other spiritual methods given in the Vedas. The power of the holy name uh, is there, for, well, for example, in uh, Satya Yuga, when silent meditation, solo silent meditation out in the woods is the Yuga Dharma. And in Dvapara Yuga, when great sacrifices held by the kings was the Dharma. In Treta Yuga, when elaborate temple worship performed by the Brahmanas, when that was the Dharma. Huh? 
even though these other methods apparently have a different form than chanting the holy name actually chanting the holy name is the active principle or the potency or the uh, source of the potency of those spiritual methods for example in deity worship in temple worship temple worship well the basic idea in temple worship is that you invite the Lord to be present in his deity form and then you offer so many nice presentations to him food incense lamps glorification prayers singing and so on so uh, with every one of these presentations there is a mantra and the mantra includes the holy name of the Lord uh -huh. in, in other words if you're worshiping Lord Chaitanya uh, 